I talked about how your parents are, you know, uh, academics and intellectuals, intellectuals. <laughs> and um, I know you you had a, a great grandfather who was like a very respected silent film actor. Is that yes, right? He was actually the empresario of the Russian Grand Opera Company. Oh, my God. Yeah. There's a whole story. But he, they were crazy. They were like these crazy. And then he was in Yiddish theater when he came to New York and he was in silent films with Lon Chaney. He was in a few oh, wow. silent films. Yeah. You but I this... never knew him. He died before I was born. Or was murdered. Yeah. Um... <laughs> well, he was murdered. He was he was hit by young. What? Well, I just <laughs> threw that out there. Well, no. well he wasn't See? murdered, but he was he was hit by a car of drunk drivers. Oh, that's oh. terrible. Yeah. You yeah. know, I have to say, I always reflexively, if someone says, and then they died, I always said, or was murdered. Was murdered but some people and you are know what? murdered, Like a Conan. third of the time, I get more after that. <laughs> he they go, they I guess, were. I guess that was involuntary manslaughter, yeah. not murder. Well, we're not judges here. We don't have to. Uh, <laughs> I think that's what it is. We, I, oh, thank you. I Thank you, judge. Oh, yes, um, you're welcome. Uh, I'm an intellectual. Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. um, but did your parents accept your career? Did they accept? No. no. No, so what was they, their attitude? Well, they, they first of all, I was uh, I suffered from benign neglect. They never really knew. They didn't really have that much hope for me in any way, shape, or form, or interest. And um, I had my older brother and sister were, you know, problem children. So I just kind of flew under the radar and did whatever I want. And when I told them I was going to be a comic, they were just, mm. yeah, you know. Yeah. But then once I was successful. It wasn't once I once their friends recognized that I was successful, then they were okay with it. It's interesting. You were doing uh, stand up comedy in this time where notoriously, I mean, things have changed so much for the better, but notoriously difficult for, for women. women? Yeah. Yes. I mean, difficult isn't even the word. Yeah. But almost a societal sense of it's really funny when a guy gets up there, but. There's almost a different lens that goes up when yeah. a woman gets on stage, which is, I mean, I used, even saw it with my own mother who, wonderful person, but the generation she came from, if I was behaving like a fool and being a wise guy, she thought it was really funny. And if my sister started to do it, she would, I could see her it's tense not up. That's not ladylike. And especially the anger. I mean, I not that my standup wasn't angry, but the, the Susie Green character, uh, you know, I mean, I don't you, you're much younger, Sona. So I don't know if you were brought up this way, but I was brought up. You do not show anger as a female. Mm -hmm. You have to be a nice little lady, you know. So right. I feel as though Susie um, gives them permission to embrace their anger in, in a certain way. But stand up in the, in the 80s was very, very difficult. And I kind of was breaking a little bit of a mold there. The women who came before me, which you could name on one hand, you know, Joan, Phyllis, Toadie, a couple of others, Jean Carroll, I felt as though they all had to be self-deprecating or the yeah. audience would not accept them. Right. You know, Phyllis dressed up in the crazy outfits. Toadie was obese. Joan was just talking about how, you know, my thighs and I'm so ugly. And she wasn't. She was adorable. Right. Yeah. But they, it was almost as though they had to be that way. And and I didn't connect to that. I didn't want to do that at all, that kind of material. Were you doing stand-up at the same time as Joy Behar? Well, yeah, Joy and I came up together. You guys came up yeah. together. So, yeah. so you could bond over that. Yes, and she was actually very influential to me. Um, I just got off the phone with her. She's still my bestie. Um, because I saw what she was doing on stage, which she was just exactly like she was off stage, but on, you know, heightened, of course. It's always heightened. But she was just like, what, first time I saw her, I was like, oh, I see. It's just like I'm sitting around the kitchen table with my girlfriends. Yeah. And women at that time, I don't know if it's still the case, would be funny around their girlfriends, but not around the boys, you right, know. Right, right. I remember my father telling me that, you know, when when you're around men, you know, just listen to them. Don't talk too much and have so many opinions. Just listen to what they're saying. And I was like, what, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> He's going to do that? <laughs> I'm sorry, but your father's <laughs> describing a golden era. Oh, no. No. <laughs> you know, and then, and then I'm... <laughs> I am sorry. I have not experienced that. And then I've I... never seen that. I, I want to go back to that time <laughs> and have someone listen to me. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. I would talk about, you know, I was talking about sex. I was talking about whatever was going on in my life. I was dating younger guys. And, you know, now women talk about that all the time, but it was not really happening. 
right. when I was talking about it. And what I would find with, you know, at, at the time the Friars Club existed and they, I would do all these benefits with, with the old guys, the old Starkers, the Alan yeah. Kings and those guys. And I was so confusing to them because they would, you know, I was cute and, you know, and they would look at me and they didn't know whether they wanted to fuck me or laugh at me. They were so confused <laughs> by it, these old guys. Right. One time I did a show with Alan King in Atlantic City and he was the host. And this is how he introduced me. He goes, in my day, all the broads who were funny had something wrong with them. Martha Ray had a big mouth. Toadie Fields was fat. But this broad is pretty and funny. <laughs> Please welcome ah! Susie Essman. Jesus That Christ. was the intro. That was the intro. Oh, my God. It was I'm a sorry. different generation. Get this. <laughs> Call Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> She's funny and you don't want to throw up when you look at her. <laughs> this broad, you know. Yeah, You had to make your bones with those guys. Yeah. But, I mean, God bless you. What do you think gave you the... I'm just going to say it, the nerve. I mean, that takes for anyone to get up on stage and do that is one thing. But for a woman at that time, what's driving you, do you think? What made you, what gave you the chutzpah you know, to use an old Irish term? I, I still don't know. <laughs> yeah. What, what, I, I, all I know is I was coming out of a very dark place in my life. I had mm. no other alternatives. I was unhappy. I was lost. Uh, and I, there was like this woman I needed to become that I didn't know what it was, but I knew that there was, she was there. And I started doing stand-up, which was friends kind of forced me to do it because I was funny. And after about a month, I was like, okay, this is what I was born to do. And then I just was, you know, just focused and just moved forward. But it wasn't easy. You know, they wouldn't put more than one woman on a lineup in yeah. those days. It would just be male, 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 one woman. You couldn't have two. So you tried not to be competitive with the other women because you were all always fighting for spots. Right. Uh, but, you know, it was hard. Were you someone who sat down and worked out what your routine no. was going to be? No. You went up no. there. Did you find it on stage? I it, it, Yes. I would find it in, in the most terrifying way. I would have, you know, premises and ideas, but I would find the punchline with the gun to my head yes. on stage. Yeah, yeah. And it be, you know, it's one of the reasons I don't do it anymore. It's too terrifying, it's terrifying. to do. Yeah. But that's how I would work. And then I would try to do it. The, I would try to do it the Jerry Seinfeld way of sitting and writing bits. And then I would try to do it. Uh, OK, I'm going to start with this material and, and, and set up a whole. And it was so boring to me. I had to be all over the place, which ended up serving me well because I became an improviser. And then yes. I got the part on Curb to improvise. But um, it, I, I would. After I would set a routine, I was able to do it that way. But to to write it, I would have to find it on stage, which is terrifying. I guess I'm comfortable in this like middle ground where I want to, I'm a, I love to prepare. Yeah. I need to prepare, especially for, there are certain things where you really have to prepare. Well, you would, would do a monologue every yeah, night. Yeah, but I always found that I enjoyed the fucking around between the jokes yeah. more than the jokes. If a joke didn't work, I loved acknowledging what just happened I can hear my own heart beating right now. And then the crowd would be like, oh my God, he noticed, I mean. But this is why I always yeah. like doing your show. Yeah. Because there was that, you know, I mean, you do certain talk shows and they they pre-interview you and what bits do you want to do? And I, I don't like working. I like to just yeah. show up and we, you know, unless you're a WB star that's 26 <laughs> years old. <laughs> and you know who you are. <laughs> he waited Every on me time. three days ago. <laughs> Yeah, he did. Does the WB uh, still exist? No, it was the CW, CW now. and then it yeah, doesn't exist. It's still anymore. there, I think. Yeah, could you yeah. guys clarify exactly what how this whole transition <laughs> happened? I mean, that was pretty much it. it what was, was that? Are you doing a joke? Yeah, I was doing a little bit of a bit oh, about okay. how I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no. So this Susie's WB giving first. me Susie's giving me the strength to really shout at both of you. I Go ahead, know, baby. I know. Go Fuckers. Ahead. Fuck faces. <laughs> <laughs> 